What if I told you that this man right here has convinced tens of thousands of people to become religious and is one of the most inspiring characters to ever exist? Joshua Graham is a character found in Fallen New Vegas' Honest Hearts DLC, and he's one of the most interesting and intimidating fictional characters ever created. Joshua Graham is a troubled man with a dark past who has cheated death and has now devoted his life to his lord and savior. A man who is calm and collected yet filled with hatred for what many have done to him. A true ruthless killer inside, but yet still a kind soul who has been forgiven given by God. A religious character is so captivating, it has convinced many to pick up their Bible and become devout followers of the Christian faith. Joshua lives in a place by the name of Zion, which takes place in Utah's National Park. But if we live in New Vegas, then how the fuck? Do we make it all the way to Utah? Well, we hear a broadcast of a group called the Happy Trails Caravan who are looking for someone just like us. So we answer through a cave and... Uh, is, it, is anybody gonna talk to us? We talked to Jed and he asked us why did we agree to this? We're probably all gonna die. We traveled three weeks to Zion and Jed tells us to not mention the name Joshua Graham to anybody. And this is when we get an explanation of who this man is. Joshua grew up as a Mormon missionary before joining Kaiser's Legion and becoming the co-founder of the faction as well as his very first legacy. He was first to command the army and for 30 long years he would help Caesar conquer the tribes of Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. He led them to many victories until at the the Battle of Hoover Dam, Caesar's Legion would suffer a humiliating defeat to the NCR. And because of this, Caesar would go on to show everybody that failure is unacceptable regardless of rank. And he would have Joshua Grand publicly executed. He was to be coated on a pitch, lit on fire, and tossed into the Grand Canyon. However, he would miraculously survive and he woke up the next day burned and broken. He crawled out the northern edge of the Grand Canyon and would bandage himself every single day. He would suffer through his journey but would eventually make it back home to New Canaan after crawling over 400 miles and enduring the three month journey and now we're gonna finally get to meet him but then god damn it ambush! don't worry buddy i'm gonna get through i'm gonna get you through this oh my! Oh! our caravan gets ambushed by the white legs tribe and let me tell you it's impossible for anyone else to survive i must have tried for about 45 minutes trying to save these stupid ass people but after dealing with them we cross the bridge and see another tribe member but instead of trying to kill us like everyone else he actually greets us and he tells us how joshua would like to meet an outsider like us so he takes us back to his camp and tells us that joshua is the leader of their tribe which goes by the name of the dead horses. When we enter the cave, we are stopped by Hoi. Auslander Zuka Joshua Graham. Show respect, Auslander. Okay, so we gotta show this guy respect. I mean, I'm used to talking to Yes Man all the time, so let's just see how this goes. We should have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. But from what I hear, the White Legs beat us to it. Okay, that shit happened like 20 minutes ago. How do you know about that? White Legs seem to be the only visitors we have these days. And you're a courier, no less. Not the one I was expecting. But I suppose he wouldn't have come with a caravan. I don't know if you were close to the other members of your group, but you have my sympathy. I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. But we can't expect God to do all the work. Well, you know, I came here with the Happy Trails caravan, but it wasn't so happy after all. Happy Trails. I remember. They were good friends. I have bad news for your employers. New Canaan was destroyed. Its citizens scattered. All because of the White Legs. And Caesar, of course. The White Legs want to join the Legion. Caesar's rite of passage is the destruction of the New Canaanites. Almost assuredly because of me. The good news is that we can help you find your way back. Daniel, one of the other New Canaanites, has made many maps of the region. The bad news is that we can't help you right now. Not with everything that's going on. So what Joshua is telling us is that a man named Daniel has the way out this dirty place. But he's not going to give it to us because they are going through a lot right now. Man, that's some bullshit. He explains that the new Canaanites enemy tribe called the White Legs because, you know, they got some pretty white legs. They aim to join Caesar's Legion and to do this, they must destroy the new Canaanites with Joshua Grand being the main target. So it looks like we're either going to have to help these guys out or just kill Joshua and Daniel to get that mother flipping map. Whether you want to help us or not. You can't get back without Daniel's assistance. Yeah, I'm not doing all that, dude. Just give me the map. I don't have time to help you guys. I'm 260 pounds, 5 foot 3. What are you going to do about it? There are many reasons why that would be a bad idea. I will illuminate three. First, do not believe that because Daniel is a missionary, he is incapable of or unwilling to defend himself. Second, if you harm Daniel or any of the sorrows or dead horses, I will find you. Make no mistake, God willing, you will not leave this valley. Lastly, waging war against good people is bad for the soul. This may not seem important to you now, but it's the most important thing I've said.
Okay, sir, what do you need me to do? You're a good neighbor to us. We all go through periods of darkness. In such times, we can turn to the Lord. But it's good to have friends. At this point in the game, if you have either joined Caesar's Legion or killed Caesar himself, we will have some unique dialogue options for Joshua. So if we choose to threaten Joshua by telling him that we're going to tell Caesar where he is, he will say, I think that would put him and you in a difficult position. Caesar has agents looking for me, but he won't admit I'm alive. And even if you killed me, he can't acknowledge that. To do so would be to admit I had never died, that Caesar made a mistake. No. He lives by his lies and shall die by his lies. There is no escaping it. But if you've already killed Caesar before admitting him, then we can deliver him the news. I have to admit, it's hard to believe that even after all he did to me, all he tried to do to find and erase me from this world, he went first. No doubt this will be good for the Mojave. I can only hope Arizona and the tribes don't suffer as the Legion falls apart around them. However, if we do decide to just kill everyone, including Daniel, and test Joshua, he will do this to us. Only a matter of time. If you harm Daniel or any of the Sorrows or Dead Horses, I will find you. You've called down the wrath! This is where the road ends! Yeah, it's probably not a good idea. But man, pray? God, what are you talking about? I am a new Canaanite. We believe we are the heirs of a spiritual tradition given to our ancestors thousands of years ago. We have made and kept covenants with our Lord God to honor his laws. In exchange, we are promised eternal salvation after this life. A day will come when our Lord returns to judge us all. Until then, we must honor his laws and start others along the path of salvation if we can. That's why we trade with others and work the tribes. We have more than food and medicine to offer. Good news is our most valuable commodity. Wow, that sounds really inspirational and I can achieve salvation and reduce suffering? Ha ha ha, no way you believe that. I know it may be hard for you to accept or even to understand. In my heart, I believe that though I am a sinner, I have been saved. And I believe there is something beyond this rock, and this air, and this water around us. Something more that is waiting for us. I have been baptized twice. Once in water, once in flame. I will carry the fire of the Holy Spirit inside until I stand before my Lord for judgment. He has been baptized twice, once in water, once in flames. Makes me want to go up to Caesar's face and give him a facial. Wait, what? Joshua sends us on a quest with follow Chalk. Yes, that's his real name. Our mission is to collect some navigation items that will help the Canaanites in case they need to evacuate Zion. We find a broken compass that we need to repair. Then I uh, stole a bunch of Joshua's pistols. I mean, hey, does it really need that many? Then we went to a Friday the 13th fishing lodge and found some walkie-talkies in a closet. I'm sure that'll work. And lastly, we gather a medical kit as well as five lunch boxes because yeah, that's what we're worried about. How are we gonna pack our fu lunch? It also may or may not have taken me like 15 minutes to find them. I mean, who would put a lunch box here? It was a dark, rainy day that also involved slaying a few yaogbai. But we then go and visit the Saros tribe where we are greeted by some stripper or something. And we finally meet this Amish looking leprechaun Daniel. The dead horses told me details about the attack on your caravan. A stranger's sympathy might not count for much, but for what it's worth. The Sorrows will mourn your friends too. They mourn everyone, even the White Legs. They have sensitive souls, innocent if there is such a thing. In spite of what's happened, I hope that Joshua and I can help you out of here. Look man, that's great and all, I get it, you need some maps and stuff, but I need to get out of this dump now. Well, I'll be. I was starting to lose hope we'd be able to get any of this, much less all of it. Tribals are smart, but, well, they're ignorant. Letting go of a taboo is difficult for them. So I knew it would have to be one of us. Turns out all it took was a gentile, or, uh, no offense. These supplies are a godsend, but if we're going to evacuate Zion without drawing more white leg attention, I need you to go back into the valley. You don't want to be like this. Okay, you better listen close because I'm not going to repeat myself. You were not invited here. This is not your home. We have what you might call a compulsion to help you on account of our beliefs. You'll find out what happens when our patience wears out. I'm not going to add sin upon sin by listening to your grumbling. You want the map? Get out in that valley. Yeah, I'll be taking that map now. I've got you now. You like that? But on our way out, we again meet with Joshua. No, not you. Take drugs. Kill a bear. Daniel said that I was to travel with you until you have completed your scouting. 
Is this pleasing to you? Okay, I don't know if pleasing is the right word, but sure, you can come along. Joshua will come up to us as we leave, but like we said earlier, while Daniel wants his tribe to leave Zion, Joshua wants something else that may include a little bit of bloodshed, which he justifies with scripture. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it even to the foundation. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. Do you know what it means? Whoa, whoa, whoa there, what are you talking about? Joshua quotes us to a multitude of verses from the book of Psalm, chapter 137. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on that day that Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried, tear it down to its foundation. Happy is the one who seizes your infant children and dashes them against the rock. Psalm 137 is a song of a people that have been hurt and are in despair. And this is a cry out to the Lord for revenge. Revenge for what the Edomites and Babylonian people had done against them. And while we are in Zion, Utah, Talk. These verses are talking about Mount Zion in Israel, and Joshua is using this when talking about his Zion, and so he was referring to the white legs as the people who destroyed their land and left them in misery. Yeah, safe to say, Joshua wants revenge for what has been done to his people. Given those two choices, yes. In the best of all possible worlds, they would just leave us in peace. But they won't. I don't enjoy killing, but when done righteously, it's just a chore, like any other. Practiced hands make for short work, and the good Lord knows there's much to be done here. Whoa, okay, Josh, but what about that verse about, you know, seizing and dashing infant children against rocks? Happy are those who do the work of the Lord. Zion belongs to God and the people of God. It is a natural temple and monument to his glory. When our Lord entered the temple and found it polluted by money changers and beasts, did he ask them to leave? Did he cry? Did he simply walk away? No. He drove them out. It is one thing to forgive a slap across my cheek, but an insult to the Lord requires... No. It demands correction. Gosh, sure, okay. You're not so certain. Fair enough. We all have doubts. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. You can be a Thomas for now. Fight the white legs enough, and you'll see the truth. I just hope that by the time you understand, there will still be time to convince Daniel that we have to fight for Zion, to save it and the sorrow. So it looks like Joshua wants to turn the innocent sorrows tribe into a war against the white legs in order to keep the land of Zion, while Daniel wants them to simply retreat peacefully and leave Zion to find another place to live. Why is this decision being left to us, a person who just got here a few hours ago? I don't know, but it is. So why should we go against the white legs and not just leave? I mean, this is going to require some big brain thinking, or maybe it won't. But Joshua, what do you know about the white legs leader, Salt Upon Wounds? He's a butcher, believe me. I know the godless fire that burns in his heart. I've been burned by it myself. He's not the kind to let his subordinates do all the killing. No, he likes to have a hand in it, with that spear of his. He's fashioned himself an abomination before the eyes of the Lord. I'm happy to serve as an instrument of divine justice. Salt Upon Wounds was also the killer of his people, the New Canons, as well as Joshua's own family. So it would make sense why Joshua would want revenge for the White Legs and Salt Upon Wounds have done to his family and his people. But we can also now get Joshua to open up by asking some personal questions. If our speech level is higher than 70, we can offer him some help for his burn. You are kind to offer, but no. There's nothing you can do. We don't use cams. But I learned long ago that I'm immune to their effects. It never stops burning. My skin. Every day I have to unwind the bandages and replace them with fresh ones. Exposing my body to the air is like living through it again. But it's better to be clean than comfortable. Yeah, Joshua doesn't want our help. I mean, look at us. I wouldn't blame him. But we can use this time to learn about his origin. I was born in Ogden, what people came to call New Canaan. Things were more peaceful when I was growing up. When I was a young man, I went out into the world to do missionary work, as all New Canaanites do. I traveled along the Long 15 and followed 89 South into Arizona. Along the way, 
I met two men from a group called the Followers of the Apocalypse. Edward Sallow and Bill Calhoun. They came to teach the tribes. Calhoun was a good man. Edward was the one who got us into trouble down the road. Damn, so it looks like Caesar and Joshua were once best friends, kind of like how me and Yes Man are. We thought we could hike into the Grand Canyon and talk to Blackfoots. We did. And the Blackfoots were friendly enough at first. But eventually... I've thought back to that day so many times. I must have mistranslated. Something must have been mixed up because the Blackfoots decided we weren't going to leave. The rest is history, assuming Edward hasn't changed it. So Joshua Graham and Caesar converted a tribe into an army forming the Legion. This way lies the path to hell. Ed Caesar needed me to translate. Translation became giving orders. Giving orders became leading in battle. Leading in battle became training, punishing, terrorizing. A series of small mistakes before a great fall. And I stayed in that darkness until after Hoover Dam. After I failed Caesar and he had me burned alive, thrown into the Grand Canyon. I survived because the fire inside burned brighter than the fire around me. I fell down into that dark chasm. The flame burned on and on. The next morning, I woke up and crawled out of the northern edge of the Grand Canyon, that cursed place. It took me three months to reach New Canaan. It was as though the prodigal son had returned. They welcomed me like I had never left, never done anything to shame them. The fire that had kept me alive was love. Their love. God's love. I will never be able to repay the debt I owe to them. But I must try. Burned alive, covered in pitch, thrown from atop the Grand Canyon, yet surviving and crawling back 400 miles. Being able to make it back all the way to a home that forgave him for all the atrocities he had committed, Joshua believed that God had forgiven him and granted him a second chance at living a righteous life. He forgave all who persecuted him and gave his life to the Lord. So yeah, it's time to go to war. But before we do that, we gotta get set up and make sure nothing goes wrong. We first take out a few white leg camps that were trying to set up traps before entering a cave that was said to have a big ass Yagwai bear living in it. And after 20 minutes of running around, plus leaving the cave only to find a giant rat scorpion, me and Walking Clouds were able to set some explosives and blow up the cave, killing anything inside. But first, before any murdering happens, we have to travel back to Daniel and break the news to him. I appreciate it. Well, that's it. This is all we need. Now all that's left is to quietly pack up and try to get out of here without being noticed. Meaning that Joshua won't try to stop me and that he hasn't talked you into fighting the white legs despite what I've said. Don't worry, I don't hold it against you. You're a... an outsider. Fighting seems like the practical solution. I'll tell you again, there's more at stake. Look, that's just the way the world is, buddy. No, why? Why? Haven't you seen enough of what's going on here to see that the sorrows don't need to butcher the white legs for a piece of land? What Joshua wants is more than an attack. He wants a slaughter. And he needs more than you and the dead horses to do it. The sorrows can't be pushed into this. You and Joshua don't have the right to force them into it. Please, consider what I'm saying. No. This is how we made the world. And we brought it to them. Joshua must be waiting for you. I'll stay here with the others. Here we have made our decision. The White Legs have been terrorizing innocent people here for too long and now it's our time to take back the Holy Land. Thank you for this. I know Daniel doesn't approve, but destroying the White Legs is the only way to ensure the Sorrows can remain in Zion. You and I will lead a group of dead horse warriors and Sorrows hunters into Three Marys from this position. Our objective is to find the White Legs leader, Salt Upon Wounds, and prevent him from fleeing. Show no quarter to the white legs we come across. Make no mistake about why we are here. This is an extermination. Joshua, the dead horses, and the sorrows will all unite to take down the white legs, making Zion a more peaceful place as well as avenging all those people who were wronged in New Canaan. We start the battle with Joshua as our companion. Using the shadow of the night, we start our fight in the mountains, killing any white leg in sight. One after another after another, with every single bullet marking a reminder for what they have done to us for decades. Eventually, we make it to their base, and with all the dead bodies around, it's clear our friends have already started their attack. But we continue for 
forward until. This is taking too long. We can't let salt upon wounds escape. I'm going to find a way around. God willing, we will finish this together. And we go through more white legs in the lake and in cave hideouts before climbing and scaling the mountains. I'm not sure if we're doing this right. And it was clear that melee weapons, probably not the answer. But we continue forward until... We warned you at Syracuse, and you persisted. You took advantage of us at New Canaan to drive us out. And like the dogs of Caesar you are, you followed us to Zion. And now you stand on holy ground. A temple to God's glory on earth. The only use for an animal in our temple is sacrifice. Kale Wachene Conserva O. You understand me, don't you? Don't you? Outman! Kunaman mad! He kill all white legs! You talk! You stop! In a last call for help, before dying, Salt Wounds tells us to intervene, and if we try to talk it over, then... Don't listen to this... thing. His cries are those of a mad beast caught in a thicket. He gave no mercy to my family, and I will give none to his. No objections. God's will. it. It's finished. When they hear what happened here, the White Lakes will crawl back to their great salt lake. If Caesar doesn't kill them, they'll wither and die like the cursed mongrels they are. Come, let's find Daniel. Tomorrow will be here soon, and there is still much work to be done. With the battle over, the remaining White Legs flee, and the dead have their corpses burned. However, this is actually not the best ending, as after this, though they have their land, the Sorrows would end up becoming merciless warriors, and Daniel's speeches and sayings would quickly fade and become obsolete, causing him to wither away from the Sorrows, eventually leaving them. So what if we sided with Daniel and chose to flee? Well, it doesn't go that well either. They don't go undetected, and many more Sorrows die and are captured. So we have to still fight against the White Legs, as well as killing Salt Upon Wounds ourselves. And the Sorrows are able to flee, but have trouble adjusting to their rough new surroundings, while the Dark Horses end up flourishing. And while some consider this a better ending, even Daniel himself will question if it was worth it due to the amount of lives lost. But, there is a third ending. If we go back to where Joshua executed Salt Wounds, we can tell Joshua to stop with a high enough speech. However, with an absurd 90 speech, we can convince Joshua to let go of his revenge and his sinful desires to instead leave it in the hands of the Lord. I want to take from them what they took from me, from my family. In this life, I want them to suffer. I want all of them to die in fear and pain. I want to have my revenge against him, against Caesar. I want to call it my own, to make my anger God's anger, to justify the things I've done. Sometimes I tell myself that these wildfires never stop burning, but I'm the one who starts them, not God, not them. I can always see it in my mind, the warmth and the heat. It will always be a part of me. But not today. Go. Get out of here. Go back. Back to the Great Salt Lake. That's it. It's finished. Thank you for staying with me. I couldn't have done this on my own. Let's go find Daniel. Tomorrow we'll be here soon. And there is much to do. Leaving the wrath and judgment to the Lord, forgiving Salt's upon just as God had forgiven him. Because after all, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others for their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Seeing this act of mercy, the sorrows would remain with some of their innocence, while the dark horses would continue their military style of trial. And for Joshua, well, the threat of the white legs ended. Joshua Graham helped the sorrows and dead horses tend to their fallen comrades and secure Zion. The courier's words had stayed Joshua's wrath in his darkest hour, and in sparing salt upon wounds, 
he was changed. While he continued to advocate militant opposition to the enemies of New Canaan, he sometimes showed quarter to those who crossed his family. Eventually, this new spirit would diminish the myth of the burned man in distant lands. A small price for the peace it brought to Joshua Graham. If this man doesn't make you religious, then I don't know who can. But seriously, in one of the best games ever made, we have one of the greatest characters to ever exist. An incredible story that will be remembered for decades to come.